What a view! You can come and burn incense, but you can also come and offer a few cigarettes. In the 1980s and 1990s, one man was responsible for up to a quarter of the world's heroin. That heroin was produced and distributed from the Golden Triangle area of Myanmar and Thailand. The money produced by that, the sale of that heroin went on to fund this man's private army, which fought battles and helped him gain control over a large area of land and territory. That man was called Khun Sa. And today we're visiting Khun Sa's base here in Thailand. Welcome to Todd Thai. Khun Sa, once one of the most wanted men in the world, an evil drug peddling warlord to his enemies, a freedom fighter for the Shan people to his supporters, he clearly liked to smoke. She gun. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> most of us had never heard his name. He is the world's biggest drug dealer. A drug dealer who builds schools. I would rank him as public enemy number one. He is freedom fighters. It has been said that you control as little as 30% or as much as 90% of all the opium that is grown in the, in the Shan state. What is the, the true amount? That's about it. That's $300 million for Khun Sa. The heroin Khun Sa supplies will bring more than $200 billion. From 1976 until 1982, Khun Sa had his base in northern Thailand, in the predominantly Shan town of Turd Thai. But in 1982, responding to international pressure, the Thais attacked the base at Turd Thai and pushed Khun Sa and his army over the border into Burma. Today the base still stands as a museum and a shrine, but as you will see, it's not in the best condition and is in dire need of some maintenance. Let's check out a statue built in honour of the CIA's at one time most wanted man in the world. Khun Sa riding on a mighty horse. We can see Shan flag there pistol in his pocket and the Mong Thai army flag. Does Pablo Escobar have a statue? I honestly don't know. Khun Sa's got one. There are still some offerings of incense. You know when you see Buddhist shrines in Thailand they've often got small offerings like this. At least a few people are still offering things in the memory of Khun Sa. This town of Tod Thai, which we've checked out, stayed in for a couple of days and checked out the market, which is a super vibrant, super interesting little town. This was the town that Khun Sa used as his base of operations. He built lots of the, the infrastructure in the town. So if there is still some respect, like we can see at the statue and to the little shrine of him, if there is still some respect, I think it's uh, because yeah, he, he really looked after and built the infrastructure of this town, at least. <laughs> this is the shrine. This is the shrine. Incense and candles. You know, a little offering to the spirits. And, uh, yeah, some of the things that people have left. I mean, Popcorn and Fanta. Eesh. I'm not convinced he would have been a big fan, but you never know. Bananas, oranges, hey, and look over here. Chicken on rice, bit of cow mangai, and uh, some jellied meat. And in the middle, of course, I'm loving these cigarettes burn as an offering. Hey, you can come and burn incense, but you can also come and offer a few cigarettes. There's at least a few people still coming and offering some stuff to the big man, sitting in a chair here. So here it is, here's a shrine to Khun Sa. Time to leave, leave the man alone. But uh, yeah, that's truly one of the uh, most weird and wonderful things I've ever seen in Thailand. And uh, Thailand's got quite a lot of weird and wonderful. Periodically, there's a real eerie squeaking. I think it's uh, some trucks brakes, but it's like low and low and continuous, and it's it's, it's giving it's giving.
Yeah, it's giving it the creepy vibes. The exhibition room is uh, heartbreakingly locked. But uh, yeah, what can we see? Well, we can see the signing of the Panglong Agreement. The Panglong Agreement was a pact reached between the Burmese government, led by General Aung San, Aung San Suu Kyi's father, and three of the main ethnic groups in Myanmar, the Shans, Chins and Kachins. Ultimately, after Aung San's assassination, the Panglong Agreement came to nothing, and the groups never got the freedoms they were promised. This, in turn, is part of the reason why ethnic armed resistance against the Burmese army continues to this day. You can see how dusty it is. And you can see that the roof's falling in. I mean, no one's putting much thought into upkeep. Over there, we can see um, lots of the Shan princes. The Shans have had for a long time a sophisticated system of hierarchy. Under the rule of the Burmese military, many of the Shan princes were exiled or killed, and their palaces demolished. You can maybe start to see why the Shan people may want some real... Uh, representation of their own. Might be enthusiastic about someone that would fight for that. Here we are, the sign for Kun Sa's old camp. Shan man on the left and a Shan woman on the side. Shan people, as well as Lana people, the Northern Thai people, are identified by wearing trousers. Bama people, Burmese people, people in other parts of Myanmar where men wear skirts. However, Shan people traditionally wear trousers. Very, very fetching large baggy trousers. Shan headdress and then a lovely Shan bag. So uh, yeah, and then a lovely Shan woman over on the side here. And then yeah, here we can see Kun Sa's old camp. On this side, the Shan flag, which Shan people still fly today, very proud of. It's kind of a mix of the Myanmar flag and the Lao flag. This is the flag of Kun Sa's army, the Mong Thai army. So this is the Mong Thai army flag, no longer used, no longer uh, flown anywhere. There's the man himself, Kun Sa. There's him on his horse, which the statue over yonder is modelled on. I learnt later that I missed the hole in the ground in the complex, where Kun Sa's soldiers that were suffering from heroin withdrawal were stuffed into to sober up as you can see here in footage from a base on the Burmese side. There's a small temple complex at the top of Kun Sa's base, because, uh, yeah, why wouldn't there be? I'm not sure whether it's whether there was any of it at the time or whether it was built afterwards, but, yeah, it's definitely Shan. There is some Shan script over there next to a picture of a child monk. What a view over the whole of Todd Thai. You can just see how many valleys and uh, just how mountainous it is. Perfect for growing opium unnoticed. Small shrine. I understand that lots of people's lives have been affected and ruined by heroin. I don't mean to make light of this situation, but I think we can see at this place another strange and tragic part of the story. This is not the last that we will hear about opium on, in this part of the world. Absolutely not. And I'm hoping it's not the last that we will hear of Kun Sa. So yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks for joining me. Do join me next time because I am about to, yeah, we're just going, we're just going, uh, we're just going deeper, baby. Let's go. Yeah.